Hey guys, welcome back to 100% Chelsea and welcome back to what is episode 6 for us, episode 5 for you. Unfortunately, we had some technical difficulties last week so we couldn't get the SBC out. But um, yes, episode 5 anyway for you guys. Um, we'll jump straight into it. Obviously, we're back at the Green Mountain Pub Wembley, the usual now. Yeah. Joined by Lewis again. Obviously, had, well, for those of you who didn't know, we had Lou was going to be on it last week, but as I said, technical difficulties. So you're back, but not back at the same time, if you see what I'm saying. Basically. Yeah. So, um, well, let's get into it. Uh, we'll start with Twitter like we usually do. First question comes from at Mahanti Punya. He asked, discuss Chelsea's bad luck with strikers under Abramovich. He thinks only Diego and Didier has been a success. I'll let you start on this one. This is a good question. Yeah. I'd say, see, there, there's going to be a lot of strikers we're talking about. So yeah. do you want to just go forwards to backwards? For the backwards past of present. Well, okay. Well, if, if you, if you want to do that, then yeah. Can, it, it, I was just going to shout out some names, but I, okay, I like the idea of this. No, because there's some proper depth to this. That's the thing. Mm. All right, so let's start. Um, Adrian Mutu. Drugs. Okay, yeah. Um, it, that's, that's all you got to say. It's just drugs, isn't it? Yeah. I, he had a decent start. I think he slipped off towards the end. To yeah. the end of 3-4 season, right? It was, yeah, he was, yeah. But he was a promising player though at the yeah. time. He was definitely promising. And I think I've talked about it at some stage, but I mean, I, I looked at some old programs recently, which I've got in like a collection thing, and there's a lot of there's a fair bit of mention about Musa in these programs. Like he definitely was a promising player, but at the end of the day, he balls that up for himself. So too much Smiths. Yeah, exactly. And um, then we go to Drogba, who don't really have to say much. Yeah, it speaks for itself. Exactly. Doesn't. Champions League, that's what I want to say. I think Good one. Johnson as well, he speaks for himself. He was yeah, obviously Good not Johnson to Drogba's was, level, but he speaks for himself. Yeah, Good Johnson was a great player though. I, I've rated him so much. Kesman though. Matthias Kesman. Kesman. <laughs> he what scored was, in the cup final. I was going to say, yeah. That. That's, that's the only thing I'm, I remember him for really, and that was about it. Now, I remember this. I remember because I had the season review of that season. And I always remember his little chip in the 4-0 win against Newcastle because he was going through a very bad run. And yeah. then he gets the penalty and just takes it with that level of confidence and runs off celebrating. He didn't really have that level of confidence over the rest of his yeah, time. that was the shame. I mean, that was probably one of our worst signings in the so-called modern era of Chelsea, I'd say. I don't know. When it comes to strikers, I'm sure there's plenty more that will come well, up. Well, there probably, there probably is, yeah. Who else are we looking at? Colton Cole? He gets our youth coming. Oh no, so he wasn't there. so he was there from before Rambush then? Yeah. Yeah. I don't forget yeah. Colin Cole. Um Shevchenko. Uh do you know what? He's the first player I got with a name on the back of my shirt. So I don't really want to hate him, but he wasn't he wasn't amazing, was he? I mean he didn't I don't justify it. Like be a hate thing. No, I mean he didn't justify the price tag at the time. Because at the time when we bought him that was a lot of money for somebody like that. And also it may have been I won't say the first Tipping point, but one of the tipping points for Mourinho leaving the first time because the saying they didn't want Shevchenko. I mean, potentially, he, he was one of those players who really should have like he, he was a star signing, you would have expected him to be a star player, but you know, it is what it is. It, he, that, his best years were behind him, so we'll get to that. <laughs> that is very far we'll get forward, yes. Yeah. Um, Claudio Pizarro. Oof. He did his best bits in the Bundesliga. That's a name That's I it. haven't heard in time. Yeah, that is the throwback. Got him on the free. Got him on the free. He was great in the, he was great mm. in the Bundesliga, but he never had it with us that season. Yeah, I, I'd say he, the Premier League wasn't the best league for him, really. It happens. Uh, I'm trying to think. Who's next after that? So Anelka. Anelka. Right, so I was speaking to him about it before the game. And he was saying he's a centre forward, so he shouldn't count. But I wanted to include him anyway. I thought Anelka was actually... Very good for Chelsea, hey, to be honest. Yeah. He beat Ronaldo to the Golden Boot with us. I think that's exactly. I mean, the, the, when he was playing with Jogba as well, I mean, some of the some of the football they were playing together was you know, Super. A, 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 amazing. Yeah, especially with Ancelotti. Exactly. I mean, that at the time he probably didn't even deserve to be sacked, but you know that was some of the. It was just the way it worked. But we were playing some unbelievable football then. Who's the next off that? Franco De Santo. <laughs> Franco De Santo. Do you know what? I cannot believe you remember that because I don't even remember him. Now, I'm trying to like just remember strikers off the top of my head. Like now we've got Jobber and Elko, who's off Sturridge. Sturridge. Oh. Do we have to speak about him after the past two games? The last week. <laughs> nah, but if, if we want to speak about his time at Chelsea, I remember the 11-12 season. I think he was joint top goal scorer with Lampard. I think on 11 goals. Bloody hell. Well, I mean... 11 <laughs> 
Look, he was one of those players where it's kind of like that that sort of Chelsea one where you know they're coming through and they're like, oh, this guy, we really want him to do well, but yeah. it just never really happened for him at Chelsea. No, I remember I was speaking to Ian about him on Monday. It was like he hates Sturridge because how selfish he was on the ball. I was, I was literally just about to say that. It, I questioned it, the, the way he played football. I still do to a certain extent. I still think he was he just didn't look up enough and he, he was too focused on himself. But yeah, no, definitely not. Definitely not one of the best. Not one, not one of the best, but I'd say he's a lot better than some of the names that we've just oh, said. Oh, without a doubt, yeah. In fact, speaking of players that didn't really fulfil their potential, Fernando Torres. Look, for me, Fernando Torres, he didn't score as many goals as he probably should have to justify the price tag, but at the end of the day, he scored some of the most important goals for us. Definitely, he so. didn't justify the price tag, but... 12-13 season, he was our top goal scorer. Yeah. And I think he beat a lot of strikers in terms of goals. He got like 23 for us that season. Yeah. I mean, he wasn't... The thing is, we all know that he did score goals, but it's like... If we can be honest with you, he probably wasn't... Okay, if, well, I'll say it like this. If somebody was going to do a list of the you know, top five or top ten, whether it be a Chelsea fan, is a list, or just a neutral fan, Torres would probably be up there with one of the worst signings. But for me, I don't, I don't agree, really. I thought he no. wasn't too bad. No, I thought, I thought he was there. On, I thought he was there on price tag alone. Yeah, on price tag alone, he's, he's got to be up there in terms of worst signs. But yeah. as a player, not the worst, yeah. but definitely not. It was going to be hard to replicate how good he was at Liverpool. I mean, especially he was a with his injuries they had before yeah, joining us. Exactly, he was a well beater then, and you know, it just it's just the way it worked, unfortunately. Um, who's that now? Um, uh, Denver sorry. Bar. Yeah, Denver Bar. Oh, what was the goal? Was it against United? Oh, well, obviously the one against Liverpool, though. Yeah. Obviously. And the PSG. Denver PSG, Bar had some PSG. decent yeah. memories with there, there was the. I can't remember who it was against, but it was the semi bicycle kick in the in the penalty area. That was over against PSG. United, United. United and City. He did, yeah, he did that yeah. twice. Yeah. So he did score some important goals. He, he, I, I, I kind of liked Denver Bar. He was kind of like. Um, What's that, he, like? What, what's that cult, cult hero kind of thing for me? I don't know why, but he just felt like that. I always felt like he was never fully given that chance with Chelsea. And I, I feel just <laughs> towards the end of twelve thirteen season, I think for even the small period he had, he had taken Torres's place as number one striker. Yeah. But as soon as Mourinho came, it was always Torres and Eto over Dembélé. Dembélé never really saw a lot of opportunities, especially in the Premier League. Mm. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll give you that. Well, who else have we got then? Samuel Leto, so, in fact. Well, that's we're on that's the one. I, I like Samuel Leto. Yeah, he was, I don't think he scored away from us, but at home he was great. I think he's the last player in 50 years to get a hat-trick against United. Yeah, exactly. It wasn't the best hat-trick, but a hat-trick nonetheless. Exactly. I, was, like, I mean, was it, um, I, I will was never it forget the celebration. Hat-trick? It was. No, it was, yeah. I'm f- no, I'm trying I, I think, to think. I think it was. No, I, I think it was. Because there was the one where he could... The, the no, deflection. no, no, he didn't score a header. Well, so what was the one? There was the one with the deflection... Which there was looped. a curling deflection. There was, I think, one from six yards out in the first half, and there was that little scramble for the third. Oh right, okay then. Well, still a hat trick nonetheless. Anyway, exactly. So yeah, yeah I think well. um, right. We'll we'll, put, we'll plow through the next ones then. Who we got? So is it? Are we going back to Pato now, or have I missed anyone out? Nah, Diego Costa. Oh yeah, say says no it, more. Says it all say no more. We, we like we said, it would be perfect now for us to have him, but unfortunately. No can do. No can. Who else? Remy. Remy was really Remy. good when we won the league in the 14 15 season. You brought him on and he did a shift. You remember the Manchester City game? We brought him on, the guy even got a goal for himself. Yeah, I, I, I just. I, I didn't really rate the guy, to be honest with you. Towards the end, but I thought at the start he was very influential off the bench. Mm. Do you remember the whole game when he scored the winner? Yeah. Late on? Yeah. I, for me, I, I'm kind of like. I understand he did score some good goals, but it's just like no, not really. I didn't, I, I didn't really understand it when we bought him. I'm trying. And how I didn't, much did he? Co- Louis, do you remember how much he cost? Yeah. Remy? Yeah. I think it was, it was between ten or eighteen million. I think. Now, because I remember we signed. I think Mourinho signed him just because Arsenal were interested in him. <laughs> well, I just remember really seeing that him. a lot. Well, just to not play him is a, is a, it's a risk, I suppose. But you know. No, no. I, th- I thought he was very good off the bench for us in that first season. Mm. Well, I, I, mean, I, I, I might have a look back at it actually. I might I have a look back at him, see, see what, because I don't really remember too much of him if I'm honest with you. No, nah, but I think this is where the list starts to dip now. Yeah. Falcao. Yeah. He came, he left. He, exactly. 
Simple. That's about it. Pato, I didn't think you were given a fair opportunity, but he came, he left. Yeah, he scored that penalty, wasn't it? And that was about exactly. it. Exactly, <laughs> against Villa. And then, where have we got? I'm trying to think. We're at Pato now. Batshuayi. Oh, I like Batshuayi, but you don't. <laughs> it's not that I don't like Batshuayi, it's just I don't think he has the quality for us. Uh, I think this, like, I'd like to see him back at Chelsea. I'd like to see him recall because I think this system would suit him a little bit better. I'll, but, I'll always be give him a second chance, but I just don't think he offers enough outside the box. Mm. I, he's one of those players which, like, he came to Chelsea and he just scored, he, in fairness, you can't lie, he just scored goals. He did, and though they may not be in the biggest of games, he did score goals. Yeah, I'm um, not going to question his finishing, it's just everything else that I question. Outside the box, is he going to be influential or not? Well, yeah, you're entitled to have that view, I suppose. Well, he's, we still got him, though. That's what I, I'm happy we still got yeah. him. Yeah, and I hope it works out for him in Valencia and he comes back a much better player. Yeah, yeah, so do I, so do I. I think, the, and he's what, now the, the first player to play in the Prem, Bundesliga, La Liga and the French League as well. Yes. Yeah. I, I'm, I'm think, I think that's what it was. I think it's this millennium, I think. I'm not sure. Yeah, there's something like that. So yeah, that's um, a unique thing to have anyway for exactly. him. Exactly. Really. But that also takes us first full circle because next player is Alvaro Morata. Yeah. Um, do you, should we really chat about him that I'd much? Say, I'd say we should chat we about really? him because that also links us into the next question from CFC Edits. This one's on Instagram though, but I'm only doing it because we can, we can link into it. Okay, says, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Do we rely too much on Hazard and is Morata improving? Okay, Marat. Okay, he's, he's coming in now. He had to, didn't he? That's why we pulled the seat out. He's actually done. Block me this time. Yeah. Excuse me, gentlemen. Large man coming through. I should have beans and everything. It's brilliant. <clears throat> right, I could not stay away from this question. I know I normally get invited. However, I am the producer, so yeah, I'm gonna get involved Go in this one. Looks. Is he improving? Hmm? Is he improving? No. Yeah. Jack's he improving. Mm, no. Not really. Should we keep loan or sell him? Or should we save that for another video, which is already out? Make sure you check the discussion video from the other day after the game. Is the Valor Matter worth keeping, loaning or selling? We should sell him and I'll drive into the airport. That's all I'm saying. Oh, this well, the... okay. Fine. I mean, no, <laughs> yeah. as long as, well, seeing as you're here now, we can ask you the same question as well. Do we rely too much on Hazard? Yes. However, I feel that it's only because the system suits him. For example, you saw how much Napoli relied on Dries Martins. Let's be honest. I mean, mm -hmm. people may say, you know, he had Insignia, he had Callahan as well, but he was the one that was doing most of the legwork. I think that's the thing with Sarri's style, because, because one of the things I heard from a lot of people when trying to research about the way Sarri plays, Sarri loves to play down that left-hand side. Mm. Yeah. So Hazard's going to see more I think more. the true test of that question will be is if Hazard gets injured. For a few weeks. Hopefully never. Touch Hopefully not. Yeah, touch him would definitely. But I think that would be the ultimate answer. Because mm -hmm. if, if he play, well, Do you know what? If he did get injured, I would love to see Hudson do it. But that would never realistically happen, would it? Like, yeah, you know it's just going to be Pedro and William. Yeah. Because we don't rotate a lot. Not enough. Not no, enough. Near enough. Mm. Hopefully we, we will on Thursday, but I say hopefully in the most hopeful of ways as well. As Probably. in not expecting us too hardly at all. Probably as much as Hudson Odoi is hoping for it. Yeah, exactly. Right, do you want me to go? Yeah, get sling your up, yeah, son. Sling, get out of yeah. it. Yeah, bye. So, so right, lovely. Thank you very much, Lou. <laughs> um, right, so that we'll move on to the next quick question. Um, and it comes to Soham Rain 11. He asks, which city you visited is your favourite? For me, it's simple. It was Barcelona. Yeah. Um, and if we're going to give a mention to England, Newcastle. They're the two for me. Newcastle's a good yeah. night out. It's such a good Gotta night out. Got to do it. And we were lucky. We're, obviously, we weren't all there. But bank, if you get it on a bank holiday weekend, then... I was not lucky. You're laughing. I got it on a bank holiday weekend. Yeah, but I was actually saying, we weren't all there. there. If we could have all gone, it would have been a, it would have been a good weekend, I tell you. That would have been a good And the result worked out in the end as well. Exactly. It would be something to celebrate other than last time. Exactly. Right, so uh, we'll move on to Instagram now. Uh, next one comes from at the Dominic One. Now I know you've asked a, a fair few questions to us actually, which we've answered. So, mate, you're doing well on the questions. I'm liking it. Yeah, fair play to you. Fair Little play to you. Applause. And uh, he asks, favorite band or solo artist? I'll let you start on this one. I don't really have a favorite. No favorite. What are you into then? What What's your sort of mood? What What are you, what are you listening to now? Literally, I'm just a chill guy. I just listen to R&B, hip hop, grime. Yeah, that's about it. Well, 
I'm generic. <laughs> I'm a little bit more in depth because I do like my music. I'll listen to anything. Like I like my old music, where it'd be like sort of funk, like sort of disco. I like the old che- like football music, the ska stuff, which is associated with Chelsea. Favorite solo artist though has got to be the Streets. Um, favorite song has it come to this or Week by Come Heroes. Now, if you've never listened to Original Pirate Material, which is his one of his albums from a long way back, it's honestly, if you like that kind of music, it's sort of like rapping but speaking at the same time it's hard to describe what it is spoken word that's it yeah that's the one is that what it's called yeah because i've always heard that type of music i've never understood what it is brilliant mate honestly it's it's so good it's 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 like kind of not it's not a massively mainstream thing but it's just the streets is incredible some of the lyrics he comes out with but i've got to say i do listen to i'm listening to quite a bit of grime as well at the moment i can't lie i'm on that bound i'm on that that wave at the moment um I don't know, we're more drill, but 6-7. I think that's more drill, but 6-7 are fucking brilliant, man. Now, my fav- if I had to pick a favourite overall, it'd probably have to be Nuts. Yeah, oh really my, he's, he's had such His a good year as well. His are fucking wavy, yeah, man. Yeah, they quality. He's had an unreal year as well. Man, he's winning yeah, awards left, right, centre. So that's a great question anyway, another great one. And uh, Louis, I cannot see what that is. Shout out your playlist. Oh, yes. Oh, of course, yeah. right. Go so, because I ain't even heard of right. So I've got I've, I've got a football playlist, and it's like it's like sort of punk. Yeah. It's, it's like football songs. So um, it's a match day. It's a, it's a one for the match day. If you go into a game or whatever, give it a little listen. It's uh, Jack Waterman on Spotify. I think my pictures of me standing in front of some fire or something like that. I don't know. But it's um, fire. exactly exactly. Um, so it's like football, and then that's the name of the playlist. And uh, yeah, knock yourself out. Have a listen. Um, but yeah, great question anyway. Next one uh, is from at uh, hstockwell15. What are your opinion, opinions on Hudson Adoy's game time up Chelsea? Do you think Hudson Adoy will get the game time that he needs? And I say this needs season. because he needs it this season. No, no, he'll get nowhere near it. Because uh, mainly, I'm looking at the first Europa League game, and I know that we didn't rotate a lot, and I know it was the toughest. Yeah. But. I still think he could have got some sort of game time. Like, even if not that game, then the game against Liverpool on Wednesday. Exactly. I mean, he could have got something. How have we not cried out for this? For eight, but this is the perfect opportunity this season, especially in Europa League, when I know Powell could probably the the um, strongest team in the group out of all three of them. So I, I, I totally no, agree no, with what you're saying. Thing. But he should have played. He should have played no, that no, game. No, that's, this is the thing. You say that they're the toughest one out of the lot, but watching that game. I'm just looking at the way they move the ball. I'm looking at like the simple basics of football. I'm thinking they're nowhere near the level of Chelsea. Oh, without I know a doubt. it was only one nil, but I'm just looking at like this is why they haven't made us pay for it because exactly. they just ain't got that quality. That's exactly why we need to pay exactly. people like so us. That's why I'm thinking doing. he should be playing. Not forgetting also like Ampadu as well. He needs to get some chance in there. Um, but Hudson Doy man, he, he was so good. In the, in, has Ampadu played this season? He has played. But I, I I don't think he started a game. I'm trying to think because he didn't he didn't play against he didn't play I, against Pau, did he? Because uh, I mean, that's was his Kane, only was, real opportunity. He didn't it was play Christensen, against Liverpool. Christensen and was it Chris- Cahill? Did he play that game? No, it was no, Rudiger. Cahill it was Rudiger. 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 Yeah. So it's it's hard to fit. It's going to be hard to fit him in. But there's definitely game time. Carabao Cup with, with Derby. That's a good opportunity. Surely. Oh, I hope so. And same again with Hudson Odoi. Yeah. I'd, I'd be shocked if he don't play against Derby thinking about it. Mm. I'd be shocked. I totally agree. I totally agree. It's the perfect opportunity. Like, if you couldn't set it up. The thing is for me, right, Hudson Adoy had such a good pre season, especially in that Arsenal game. Yeah. He was making Bellerin. He had Bellerin on toast, mate. It was honest fucking to God. Glorious. Literally. Well, he loved watching that. And you want, they're, they're young, so they've got no fear. They'll just carry on that form. You don't really. When you're young, you sort of you don't really think too much about your confidence. Thing, you just you, want to play yeah, football. Yeah, you're more willing to take risks when you're younger. When you're older, you've got more of that spirit. So you think, okay, if I try this, it's probably not going to work. Exactly. Then you go for something simpler. And when they're younger, we're more willing to cut them some slack because they're still learning, obviously. Yeah. I know Christians has made a couple of dodgy errors here, but he's still learning. No, but that's the, that's the reason why I've been why I haven't been too on him for it because ever since the Barcelona game, there has been those mental lapses, but. Before then, he was such a good defender. Wasn't he? Exactly. So comp- I yeah. kept talking about his composure because he looked so much older than he really is. Yeah, exactly. So we'll we'll see what the future holds anyway. But it's one of those things which, you know, 
it, it will be a talking point until the next big thing comes through. Yeah. Uh, when that will be is is a question we don't know. A couple years ago, we were talking about Loftus Cheek like that. Exactly, and, and he's, still he's, exactly. he's still available. Exactly, he's still he's still available. I I do want to see Ruben. It, the thing is, Ruben is a unit, and that's what you want in the midfielder. Yeah, like he he and looks he's like very a, good at bringing the ball forward. Exactly, literally on instinct, he's such a good player. Exactly, and um, I, I don't think he's going to get the game time. He'll he'll play ahead of Drinkwater. No. You know, I think I don't know what's going to happen to Danny Drinkwater, but I, I, apparently you don't even want to move. I well, saw an article yesterday. He was saying that he's not. Re- he's. N- I don't remember the name of it, but from the gist of it, it sounds like he doesn't really feel like moving. And to be honest, the way just he's on, I won't. Exactly, him. he's sitting very pretty at the moment. Move like Winston Bogard 2.0. Yeah, well, he is. He's, he's at the age now where he doesn't even have to prove himself. So I suppose he could just sit there. Hey, he's got a fucking Premier League medal. I yeah, exactly. Yeah. All right. right um, I'll let you answer the next one because I want to sit. <laughs> right. The next question from Spencer J, and I don't know if that's Junior or not, but I'm just going to go Spencer Junior, and he says, is Mourinho gone? Uh, right, if, it's going to be too hard for me to comment like deeply on this, because I, I, obviously I'm not a United fan, and they'll know better than me, but I think he'll be, if he carries on like this, he'll be up there with one of the first to go, I think. This is the thing, it's another question where it's like, I'd wait for their game against Valencia. This is the thing. We're recording this as the Valencia game's happening tonight. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So I'm thinking the big question is based on do they beat Valencia tonight? Yes or no? Because they need they need some sort of confidence boost. Yeah. Let's be honest, they need something right now. Yeah, well, I mean, we'll, we'll, we'll see like what happens with that. But I think that to get spanked by West Ham the way they did at the weekend, is is crazy and I, I think and I know Mourinho's supposedly come out and said Mourinho's supposedly come out and said these things about what was it Pogba yeah. and Martial that is that like some or Lukaku like that. yeah or Lukaku or something like that. so I mean I don't know what the highlights on over there oh in, well that is that's quite perfect nice. timing really, yeah uh, actually they're just shining on Natovic's goal there yeah. he's, he's a player he'd be very good he'd be very good for Chelsea but I'm 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 not, uh, but I'd say he's old though, so I wouldn't want him, but he'd be a good shout. Anyway, getting back to the question. So, it's what is it's, it's like, it's the time now Mourinho historically begins to lose the plot a little bit. So, that's why I'm hoping he doesn't go though, because I just want to, I just want to see if he, if he manages to make it to the end of the season. Yeah. What happens next? Exactly. Like, it's intriguing. Do you get that? Yeah. I mean, I, I'm basking in the fact that United. Uh, uh, at the moment, it's they're, they're nowhere near where it's they used beautiful. to be. Exactly. I mean, all all the, all the years where they had so much dominance. And I know we've had a fair bit too, but all that time at United, it's just like you, you know, every fan knows it. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Imagine being a Liverpool fan, like a proper old Liverpool fan, seeing them tear the league apart and seeing United claw back and just keep gaining <laughs> yeah. ground, and now they're above them at everything. Yeah, exactly. I never want to feel that. Exactly. Pray to God we don't have to feel that anyway. Right, um, so the last question for Sabas Corner comes from at Harvey Johnston. Which team would you love to face and go away to in Europa League, including teams who could come out of the Champions League? Now, my two would be Marseille, Fenerbahce, I think. I don't know why, but I just quite like the idea of them too. Turkey away, I think the atmosphere would be bonkers. Marseille away is quite good as well, but... So, I don't know, it's weird. I don't know why I like Marseille, but it's France, I suppose, well, not too hard. Hmm. Teams that will drop out of the champion for teams that are in the Europa League. That that's for, that's teams that are in the Europa League right now. All right, teams that are. But it's, in it could be anyone League. who you want. Marseille, I'll go with you. I'd love to go to Marseille. Yeah. Who who else is still in there? What Greeks? What uh, what Turkish side do you say was still in there? Fenerbahce. Fenerbahce, I'd definitely do that. Um, who else? Galatasaray, they're still about. Galatasaray. Galatasaray in Champions League, am I right in saying? I, I, I think so. I, I, I think I, so. I, I just focus on the elite European, yeah. uh, European League first. Yeah, Europe. exactly. Nah, but if I had to pick teams for going first. I know what you'd want. <laughs> yeah, you know what I want. Yeah. Marseille or Ajax? Fucking knew it! Yeah. I knew it! It's just for the Amsterdam. It's, a beautiful, it's just the Amsterdam. It's a beautiful scene. I can't lie, I would definitely want Ajax to drop out of the Champions League and us draw them. I'm, I'm not beating around Same, the bush. Ajax third, well. Tottenham fourth. Jeez, I have to make sure someone puts you to on a leash. Not, in the, <laughs> not on the traditional Amsterdam way, but. <laughs> you know. Yeah. Just, no, we'll be fine. We'll be fine. You'll be fine. 
I was there by myself and I was fine. I came yeah, back. Oh no, no, I went without you guys. I was fine. Mm. So I wouldn't need to be on the leash. I'll be good. He's got other friends, he says. Oh, no, no. no. <laughs> no fucking put me on that guilt <laughs> Anyway, yeah, that's what we think anyway. And that will uh, end the main questions now. So we'll uh, head over to Sabas Corner. Thank you again for your questions. Now we've had the same, uh, I will just say, we've had, all, uh, like, we're so thankful for you sending your questions, but we are tending to have a lot of the same thing, like who should we sign in January, strikers, like who do we need, this sort of thing. A bit of variation is what we want. Like, uh, as I said, ask us literally anything. It doesn't have to be football because we love answering any type of question you bring, really. But just vary them up a little bit. That's what we want. Like, so we can get you guys involved as well more. Maybe just have a look back through some of the episodes, you know, see what we've already answered. And yeah, that's, that's all I can say, really. But as I said, questions so far have been great anyway. So I can't complain too much, really. And uh, we'll head over to our the corner. What's going on, guys? Welcome back to Sad Bastards Corner. And this is the part of the show where we pick out our Sad Bastard of the Week. And our Sad Bastard for this week is the Football Fan Chat. So congratulations, mate. Our Sad Bastard of the Week. A little round of applause. But yeah, and he's asked us actually three questions this time, not one. So we're going to have a little cluster. And the first question is, what are your thoughts on against modern football? Right. I want to come on to that last. You want to come on to that, that last? Yeah, that's going to be the talking oh, point. come uh, we'll go on to the next question then, and the next question is, is 100% Chelsea a full-time thing now for you guys? Right, so um, basically at the moment we're all students, so we sort of supplement our free time, shall we say, we're doing the channel as well. Yeah. Um, so technically no, it's not a full-time thing really, is it? It's in progress, that's what yeah, I'd say. Yeah, exactly, exactly. I mean, um, it's, it, it can be hard for us, you know, to find the time a lot of the time. Like, as in, for example, we, when we film this video, we've, we, we, it's like in the middle of a clustered day. But, I mean, it's, it's one of those things which we wouldn't change, I don't think, for the world at the moment. Do you know what I mean? I think it's, I think it's a case where we are making money, but we're not making profit. Because yeah. you look at, we do, we do make something off this channel, but the majority of it gets put back into travel, into tickets, into petrol, into... Yeah hotels for away games you look at all the stuff that you have to do mm. we're not at that point where we're making profit yet all the money that we make is going straight back into reinvest yeah 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 i mean hopefully in in the coming years we'll be able to get to a point where we can say like this is we're, we're good we, we, you know do you know what i mean yeah but uh, like it's it's, it's 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 don't get me wrong it's never it's not easy at this time to do to do what we're doing but we, we wouldn't as i said we wouldn't change for the world we put in the effort because we love doing what we do and uh, we're providing, we feel like we provide a service to you guys as well, and I think that's... Exactly. Because the way I used All to you man who say that we just do this for profit, here's me telling yeah. you right now, we're not making profits. Because when I first started like, doing the channel, doing the fan cams, I was like, I, like, I, 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 I thought, so, it's, it's like, enjoyable, I really like doing this. But then somebody said to me, you're actually, think about those people who can't go to the games. Like, you're there to, to let them know. And I thought to myself, yeah, do you know what, that's true. But like, and I remember when I didn't used to go to the games, there was no way of me... I, I couldn't really consume football content because like, there was not really any proper ways of doing it. And now we've got the opportunity to do that. I love the fact that we can, we can do that. We have the ability that's, that's to. That's literally been our thought process behind, behind all of it. When, yeah. Louis, when Louis is doing fan cams, when I'm doing the match day vlogs, when you're on, in the, uh, when you're on the Instagram live. Yeah, yeah. That's literally all our thought process behind it. That's why we do it with so much depth. Because mm. there's only four, because there's tens of millions of Chelsea fans in the world, but there's only forty-two thousand that can go to the bridge. Yeah, exactly. That's why I vlog. That's why he does fan cams. That's why you do Instagram yeah. live for those who aren't there. And yeah, want the experience. And yeah, Lawrence's exactly. previous interviews. I'm sorry, Lawrence. Yeah. That's my fault. <laughs> well, that brings us on to the next question. Anyway, but I'll, I'll go add on to that. Without you guys, anyway, we wouldn't be here. So thank you for that. Anyway. Sad bastard of the week. Thank you, Chelsea subscribers. Exactly. Yeah, you can have it. Yeah, definitely. But definitely. like you said, that did move us perfectly on to the next question. Next question is, when's Lawrence next, next meeting up with us? Well, not and so when long. when is Lawrence meeting up Yeah, not that, not that long away. It's as of filming today, it is two days, I think, he's yeah. doing. So he'll be with us for Southampton away. And he'll be with us for Vidi in the cup as well. Oh, of course, yeah, he will. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think he's so, coming uh, straight from the airport to the game. Oh, fair play, he's committed. Yeah, how's he bringing his luggage in, though? That's what I'm trying to figure out. Sammy Scott. Sammy Scott? Yeah. Oh, there you go. We're all right, then. So, yeah, it'd be good to uh, see him. We haven't seen him in, in, a, in, in a while, actually. So, yeah. I hope he enjoys some good Europa, Europa League football. <laughs> yeah. But there's one question we still right, haven't yeah. gone to yet. Yeah, that is question one. is, what are your thoughts against 
What are your thoughts on against modern football? Okay, so this is actually one of those things which I feel kind of passionate about because the way that modern football is going at the moment, I think, in, in some respects, is absolutely disgraceful. Now, you may have seen our video or the Louis video, what he did about the um, Chelsea, like 100% Chelsea are against games abroad. We totally support that, as in support hit like our views. Like We do not agree that games should be played abroad. The La Liga thing is ridiculous. Football now is becoming just, it's ridiculous. The money involved is obviously one of those things which comes part and parcel. But I mean, there still seems to be a lot of corruption, a lot of stupidity in the higher echelons of the football football world. And do you know what I mean? I just, I, I find it, it's, it's really hard for me. I think it, it's taken away from the purity of the game. It's becoming so sanitised. You, you can hear it in the grounds. Exactly. Go to a top six ground and you can't hear the whole I know. Grounds. And no, I won't even go top six. I'll go the whole Premier League by Huddersfield. Exactly. Is that, you, you get a bit of noise for the start of the game and the first 10 minutes of the game. But after that, it goes. And I mean, you look in Europe and I crave an ultras group in England, a proper ultras group in England. You know Not, when we play Pia, uh, Palk away? Yeah. Uh, someone sent us. A, someone sent us a couple of Insta videos of the fucking home fans. Uh, it's Do you know incredible. How loud they were. It's incredible, and that, that makes us look. And the thing is, that is a lot more pure football though, because it's not been completely gentrified. It's not a tourist hub. Do you know what I mean? It's there for the real fans who will go all the time. Now here's the thing. I go on Reddit a lot, and I check and I check what some of the I check the soccer subreddit. Premier League. The Premier League home crowds get laughed at. Yeah. by fans of Atletico Madrid or other European clubs. I ain't surprised, man. I ain't surprised. And to a certain extent, football needs tourism. Don't get me wrong. And now we'll all... We're, it, it will sound a little bit hypocritical because obviously we love to go to another game. Let's say if, if we know, wanted I'm to go to... I'm modern football, says the blogger. Yeah. I get that. But well, on that, okay, on that, right. So that is... I, I'd, I'd, I'll, I'll let you have a chat on this as well. But I, I think that... We have our opinions, but we're still providing a service. We're yeah. not. We're, we're, uh, it's, uh, do you see what I'm trying to say here? Can I slip in on this one? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Go, come on, come on. Yeah, I yeah. thought you wanted to come to join in. No, because I get really pissed off with this. Because when I put right. the thing, when I put the thing for, uh, wait, wait, give it a sec. When I put the thing for um, the uh, the La Liga thing, I put that on Twitter. The amount of not just football fans, Chelsea fans especially. Quoting me saying you can't be a vlogger, which, I, which when I'm not. Uh, yeah, that's my job. Yeah, that's your job. <laughs> uh, it's, uh, you can't be a vlogger and be against modern football. You are modern football. Yeah. What we do is not modern football. It's modern society. People have conversations online. We just have an audience. There's nothing wrong with that. However, when we go to games, when I'm speaking to people outside the ground, if you notice. I am. We are against modern football because we speak to people about the game and call out all that type of stuff and put that online. We yeah. use a modern tool to argue against values which are just not there for other people and for football fans. Can I can I build one thing on that point? Go on. Because people will always talk about how we fake rant for views and oh, shit like that. You, you, you. No, no, wait, wait. Here's the thing. What's the difference of that and just? Walking into a pub after the game, you just hear everyone complaining after a loss. I remember when we lost to Man City last season, right? Uh-huh. I jumped, we all jumped on the club train afterwards. I promise you, my entire carriage was just filled with people complaining about the performance. And I'm just watching this thinking, okay, so that's calm now, but you point a camera in front of their face and we're using them. Mm. It's not. Where's the sense in you're that? Just, you're just taking, you're taking a conversation putting it online. It's as simple as that. Yeah. And just because we have an audience, don't get fucking butt hurt. We, we, we try and use that to harness it and give football fans a voice. That's what we believe in anyway. I think that everyone's entitled to their own opinion, though. I mean, if, if you don't like the type of thing that we do, then that's, that's fair enough. That's your own opinion. But at the end of the day, there's still a lot of people out there who appreciate what we do. Mm. And, um, and as it goes back to what we were saying earlier. We, we feel like we provide a service more than anything. And like we are there for those who can't, exactly. who can't make it. And, Plus, yeah. and we get a lot of people who say that we're really thankful for what you do and we really appreciate that, like, honestly. And then there's always going to be people who, who say, like, oh, what you do is stupid. And to a certain extent, I mean, I, I, I've said I, I, I wouldn't vlog. Like, I, I've actually yeah. said to you, I wouldn't vlog myself at a football match because I am one of those people who just want to watch the game. But I'm not against it. Like, mm. do you know what I mean? What Lewis does, some of the content which Lewis puts out is, like, 
fucking amazing. Yeah. No, oh, you're warming my heart. Yeah, you know. Oh, it, you're, my boy, you're my boys. Look, you, 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 uh, these two right now, okay? They fucking provide the service. This is very uncomfortable. Oh, sorry, <laughs> let me get you comfy. There we go. Be, be next to my tit. There you go. No, no, no. <laughs> no, but seriously, these two work hard. They provide a service for people, you know. And as as a, as a channel, we just want to give you guys your your opinions to get out there. This is what this show is all about. This is what fan cams are all about, you know. And there's so much more to come. And quite frankly, you know, hmm. uh, you can be on a fan channel. You can be part of a fan channel and be against modern football because the key word in it is fan. You know, we're not we're not just doing it for the sake of it. We're yeah. not the ones exploiting mm. fans because we're not be- we're not forcing them to pay anything. No, exactly. It's we're a free not- service, in fact. Exactly. That's the thing. It's mm. free, and all you all you do is Google pays us. You know, you watch a couple of the ads and we're sorted. Well, I would say sorted, but we're fucking far from it, aren't we? <laughs> so, uh, so yeah. But anyway, lads, I'm yeah. into it. Enjoy the rest of it. <laughs> yeah. Uh, do you know what? I think we'll wrap up there. Wrap up we? there. Yeah, may as well. Yeah, let's we'll say we'll wrap up there, guys. This has been yet another episode of the Sad Bastard Show. Don't forget to like and subscribe to 100% Chelsea. All social media links will be down in the description below for Facebook, Snapchat, Twitter, and Instagram. Don't forget to follow all of us on our socials. Don't forget to follow our YouTube channels as well. And don't forget to like and subscribe to 100% Chelsea. And we'll see you guys on Thursday, I guess. Mm -hmm. It will be. See you then. Yeah, like and subscribe. Peace.